This second video looks at the impact of changing closed loop poles. Just a reminder of where we're going in the long term, we're asking questions about what are root loci and why they're important and how do I compute them, and this is really where we are at the moment. Later on, we'll look at how you might use these insights for design. So here, we're going to focus on how closed loop behavior changes as the compensator gain is changed, and you'll see that links directly to the root loci. So some background. We're assuming you've got a simple feedback loop of this form with a compensator M of S and a transfer function G of S to represent the system. We're going to assume that your compensator can be separated out as some K times some transfer function. And this K is what we're going to change in the root loci. So we're going to write GM equals K times GM tilde or KN over D. Now, having done that, we can show that the closed loop poles are given by this formula here. K times N plus D. Now in the first video, we showed that you, compute, you could compute the closed loop poles basically by writing PC equals KN plus D. And we looked at that with some paper and pen exercises. Now what we want to do is look at the behaviours of the system, not just the pole positions as we change K. And we're going to use MATLAB to demonstrate this because obviously if you want to do lots of um, step responses, doing it on pen and paper is non-trivial. First example, you'll notice we've got a simple system there, G equals K over S plus 2. What we want to do is change this K and look at the impact on the behaviours. Now we already know from the first video, that the closed loop pole polynomial is given by s plus k plus 2, so the poles are at minus k minus 2, and therefore what we expect is that the system response will get faster and faster as k is increased, because that pole is moving to the left. So what are we going to do? We're going to look at the use of r locus.m for finding the pole positions, and then we're going to use overlay many to show how the behaviour changes as we change K. So let's move to MATLAB and you will see what's happening. OK, so the first thing we want to do is enter our transfer function. There it is, G equals 1 over S plus 2. And now we're going to use this R locus function. Now if you look at the bit I've highlighted, you'll see it allows you to put in lots of different values of K. So I've put in 0 0.1, 0 0.5, 1, 3, 10. And what it will do is it will give me the corresponding closed loop poles. So you see here I've put in G and then for the compensator gain 0 0.1 the corresponding closed loop pole is the first output from P minus 2.1. The second K value I've put in 0 0.5 the corresponding closed loop pole is minus 2.5. The third value I've put in 1 the corresponding closed loop pole is minus 3 and so on. So you can actually get the exact values out which shortcuts this paper and pen exercise. Now I can generate a figure if I want, the figure we did in video 1, and I, to do that I use the same R locus command, but I don't have an output argument. So let's try that one. And here you can see the figure. And if I use the cursor arrow you can see it's marked this star tells you where it starts for k equals 0, and the rest of this line tells you what's happening as k increases. And here it's only gone as for values of k that take you as far as minus 12, and that will correspond to this value of k 10. Now the next thing I want to do is say, OK, I know what's happening to the poles. Can I have a look and see what happens to the corresponding responses? So I'm going to use this file overlay many, which I've written, which you'll see allows you to put in the system G and then lots of different compensators. I can have a compensator 0 0.1 or compensator 0 0.5 or compensator 1 and so on. So I use this line, then you'll see it generates a figure. Let's just move that other figure. Uh, that's the inputs in case we want them. But if we look at this figure in the bottom right, you'll see it shows you the output responses for the different compensators. So the first value is compensator 1, and you'll see this blue plot is relatively slow. As I increase k, the pole moves to the left, system response gets faster, I get the green plot. As I increase k again, the pole moves further to the left, I get the red plot, you'll see it's a little bit faster. As I increase k again, it's faster again, and you'll see as I increase k, the response gets faster and faster and faster, as expected. Clearly, the inputs are more aggressive 
and that's what you would expect. Example 2 then. In this case, you'll notice I've got gm equals k of s squared plus 4s, and the closed loop poly pole polynomial for this is s squared plus 4s plus 4, or you can calculate the poles as minus 2 plus or minus the root of 16 minus 4k. And what you remember is the poles got faster up until k was 4. And you can see that from this formula here. However, if you made k bigger than 4, then the bit under the square root became negative, and therefore you ended up with complex roots, and so you got oscillation. So again, what we want to do is see, OK, can I investigate this on MATLAB using R locus to see what the poles do for many different k, and then use overlay many to compare the behaviors. So if we go to this window here, and we'll find example 2, there it is. So I can enter my transfer function. There it was, 1 over s squared plus 4s. And here, I'll put in my r locus command. And you'll see I've put in different values of k, 0 0.2, 0 0.5, 248. So let's run that. And what do you notice? You get a whole series of outputs. So for 0 0.2, the corresponding poles, there they are, minus 3.9, minus 0 0.5. For 0 0.5, the corresponding poles, minus 3.8, minus 0.12. For 2, if we go down, corresponding poles, and so on. And so you'll see for each value of k, we've got the corresponding pole positions. And we could use that to calculate the plot. But if I just wanted to see the actual locus in its entirety, I could just go r locus g. And there you can see what we got in video 1. One of them starts at 0 over here. One of them starts at minus 4, they move together as k increases, and then they separate and go left. Now if I wanted to look at the behaviours, I can do here, overlay many, I'm just going to compare k equals 3 and 10. And what do you notice? I can see for k equals 3 I get this blue plot, nice and smooth, but relatively slow. For k equals 10, it's beginning to oscillate, but it's faster. If I want to put in many more Example 3. So here we've got gm equals k, s plus 1 over s squared plus 5s plus 6. Again, this matches what we did in the first video. You can see I've reminded you what the closed loop pole polynomial is. There it is. And again, we're going to look at the use of our locus and the use of overlay many to see how behaviours change as we change k. So if I go down here and find example 3. Where is it? There it is. So enter G. There's my G. And I do this R locus with some different values of K. And again, what do you notice? For the first value of K, which was 0 0.2, there are the poles. For the second value of K, which is 0 0.5, here are the poles. Third value of K, here are the poles. So I can extract all the poles for different values of K. Now, if I want to see the, heart, the whole figure, for those, I can use this R locus command, and what do you notice, as shown in video 1, the first pole starts here and goes to the right, and the second pole starts here and goes to the left. If I want to do the behaviours, I can use this overlay many, and what do you notice, as we increase k, again, the system gets faster to some extent, but what do you notice? Do you remember, one of those poles was moving to the right, it was actually getting slower. So one was getting faster, and you can see this fast dynamic on the left, but the other was getting slower. So as you increase k, can you see this black plot at the top is actually slower to settle than this blue plot down here. So the root locus, loci is telling you one of these poles is getting slower, and when we look at the step response behaviours, we can see that happening. Example 4. So this one's a bit more complex now, because you'll notice I've gone to a cubic pole polynomial, so it's quite hard to do this on pen and paper. But again, when we go to MATLAB, you'll see it makes no difference. It doesn't care whether it's first order, second order, or tenth order. It's equally easy. 
So let's just scroll down here and find example 4. There it is. We stick it in. There's the corresponding g. You can see it's a cubic. Again, to the root locus for a number of different values of k. And what do you notice here? We're getting three poles for each value of k because it's a cubic. And again, you can do this pairing with 0.2. You get the poles shown here. With 0.5, you get the poles shown here in column 2 and so on. So you can extract all the values if you want them. But it is, as a rule, a little bit easier just to look at the figure. So here, if we look at the figure, what do you see? You see one pole starts here at 0, and you can see the red line moves to the left and then goes off in this direction. One starts over here at minus 2, moves to the right, goes off in this direction. One starts at minus 3 and goes in this direction. Again, I can overlay all the responses. And what do you notice? Sorry, this graph is a bit busy, but you'll see for low k, I have this blue plot. It's rather slow um, to get there, but smooth. As I increase k, it's faster and smooth. If I increase k too far, you'll see now, at first you get this red plot, which begins to overshoot and oscillate. So you've now got roots which are complex and that's what you saw in the root loci. As you increased k, some of the poles began to become complex and indeed the response got slower. I'll go back to the root loci in a minute and you will see that the plots, the, the root loci were actually moving to the right. They were getting slower and slower and so therefore you'll see that these plots they're getting more and more oscillatory and slower and slower to settle. So if I go back here, do that root locus plot again and you see. What do you notice? Initially the response speeds up because this pole here is moving to the left but then as you increase k further they begin moving to the right again and getting slower and also very oscillatory because the imaginary part is big compared to the real part. So what you're seeing in the root loci matches what you're seeing in the behaviours. So conclusions. We've demonstrated that as the compensator scale again changes, then the closed loop poles change, and obviously the behaviour changes as the pole change. We've also demonstrated that MATLAB is an effective tool for allowing you to look at how the poles move through the row loci and also how the corresponding behaviours move. However, you'll notice this has been a little bit messy, and you might be asking yourself a question, is this an effective way of getting a good choice for K and we will carry on with that discussion in the next video.